Hey guys, it's Girl Gut Game, and welcome back to Psychedelica the Black Butterfly. After all this time, we're finally back in this world, and we're here to do Manshiro slash Kazuya's route. I'm gonna be trying my darndest not to say Kaguya, because I just finished Kaguya's route in Taisho Alice. But yeah, we are going to try and get this boy's two endings, his Psychedelica ending and his real world ending. First up, we're gonna try for his Psychedelica one, so the Monshiro ending. And we're just in the prologue right now, basically. Um, Monshiro doesn't show up a ton, so this will be a pretty quick run through, at least the early chapters, definitely. Um, but this is when we first ran into him, so I thought we should reacquaint ourselves with his awesome entrance. So, Beast attacking me and Hakage, and I'm like, what now? Pressing wrong buttons, because I'm playing six different games. That's what's, what's now. Spine and opportunity, the monster leaps up and brings its arm down upon us. This is the end! I close my eyes, waiting for the impact. But... What? The next moment, I realize that the one who got struck wasn't me. It's our ball. Saving us. An earth-shattering scream rends the air, and then the monster is on the ground, squirming as it melts away. Up until a moment ago, it was a solid thing, but now it shimmers like some kind of heat haze with a black outline. Before long... The giant body shatters into a kaleidoscope of black butterflies, which are absorbed into the necklace of the person now standing at the top of the stairwell. Who is that? I mean, look at this guy. He's incredible. From a few meters away, a man holds a gun at the ready. The fox mask he wears prevents me from seeing his facial expression. Did he save us? Or... <laughs> I try to approach him, but he turns away and shoots the other monster down without hesitation. It turned into black butterflies again. As if they have found a place to die, the butterflies are drawn up into the necklace. The man in the mask takes the necklace between his fingers and raises it up to eye level. After checking something carefully, he makes to walk away without a word. Wonder why he checked his necklace. Wait! Do you live here? Why are you wearing that mask? Why am I still pressing the wrong buttons? Hey, are you crazy? Look at how suspicious that guy is. But I... The man in the fox mask looks briefly at us as we mutter to one another. Apparently losing interest, he disappears into the second floor hallway. <sighs> you're so reckless. You can hardly protect yourself, but you're still trying to chat up strangers. We don't even know if he's on our side. I'm sorry. He did save us from that monster, though. Oh no! Your arm! You're bleeding badly! Alright, well, I don't care about you bleeding badly. <laughs> it's time to skip ahead again. So, it's gonna be a while before things change with our boy. I'm trying to remember, he doesn't really show up again until Yamato's transformation, so... Unfortunately, I can't go through the flowchart. So I'm just gonna have to suck at doing my butterfly shooting again. Right, Hakage? You know how terrible I am at this game. And if I say that, I will get a higher rank, maybe. Oh my goodness, why am I not locking on nothing this time? Anytime you want to lock on things, that's wonderful. Gotta get those kaleidoscope butterflies in particular. Otherwise, I'm in trouble. Come on. Lock on. You know you want to. You know you need to. Shoot all the butterflies. Man, there's so many compared to like when we first started this game. There's like hardly any butterflies. Now there's tons. Come on. 
Come on. Why are you flying so directly for me? Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I hate when my mouse scrolls over the shoot button by accident. <laughs> I'm like, no, I didn't want to shoot then. Dang it. He looks happy. No wonder he's happy. He's so proud of me. Aw, thanks, boo. All right, we're good. <laughs> Moving on with our lives. All right. Moving on to our next choice, whatever it is, because it's going to be a little bit of time. I think it's chapter three. Oh boy, we're only starting chapter one. Yeah, it's going to be a while. <laughs> Get comfy, everyone. Um, while we're skipping, I should mention that Monchero slash Kazia has only three short episodes. One of which I think we've seen already. Um, if not two. One for sure we've seen already. Um, the one that takes place right when um, chapter four begins. The other one is, the other two actually take place near the end of chapter four. So I'm probably just gonna wait till chapter five starts and then do those final two short episodes. But that's the plan. So we might get, I don't know how long we're gonna, how long catching up with Monchero is gonna take in chapter three. We might actually get to at least one of those short episodes, if not more, in the first episode, which would be crazy. I wonder, hmm, yeah, I wonder. <laughs> I wonder about buttons and things. There we go. I might as well spend time with Yamato since he's the twin brother. It would be appropriate. You and I can do another shooting minigame. Yep, here we go. I wonder if I get to do a shooting minigame with Monshiro at all. There is a space for him in like the minigame section of the title screen. Oh, by the way, Yamato, I'm going to suck, right? Okay, I'm glad we established this. Don't expect much, I'm gonna hold you back. You're gonna be very disappointed in me and my very bad FPS shooting skills. So I hope you're ready for this. Also, I'm sorry that I did your route last and I'm moving on to your brother like immediately after, but that's what the walkthrough said to do, so it's nothing personal. I still simp for you. I promise. <laughs> I will be true to you, even as I suck at shooting butterflies. Okay, just to make sure I don't miss the kaleidoscopy ones, because they're pretty. I think they're worth more points or something. I'm not actually sure how the point system is determined. I know it has something to do with how many you lock on at once before you shoot. That's a big part. I don't think it takes into account how many you miss, really? It doesn't care about that so much. And I think there's nothing to do with the kaleidoscopy butterflies. Nice. Actually, I did pretty good with that one. I got to 54,000. That's gotta be an S, right? Right? Yeah, you know you wanna give it to me. Thank you. All right. Moving on again. Okay, we're gonna get to chapter three eventually. Punch, punch, punch. So yeah, I I mean, unless once we get onto Manchero's route, there's like su substantially a lot more story going on there, I will be surprised at how long this route may be. It might be short. Especially the Manchero ending. Specifically. Okay, so we hung out with Yamato, and now uh, we definitely want to know more about him because that is tied to Manshiro. And then I think the next choice is an important one. It's not the, it's not one that I 
expected, if I'm thinking correctly. Yes. Okay. So I thought for sure the I wish this was all a dream was going to be a Harasaba one. It might still be, I'm not sure, but um, the I wish this was all a dream is also something I have to pick for Manchiro, is what I've been told. Because I can't remember who told me. Somebody said that, oh, I know you mentioned that this is like a Karaspa thing, but it's actually for Manchero, which I'm thankful for, because I would have thought it would be, um, you know, can Yamato really not turn back? Because it's kind of tied into that. But that is not the case. So I wish this was all a dream. It was only just a dream. I wish this was all a dream. I'd fall asleep and wake up in my own room. I'd go down to the living room and Dad would be waiting with breakfast ready for me. I'd be so happy to go back to that life. Thinking about the warmth of home is almost an escape from all of this. I try my best to be brave, to face everything that has happened over the past few days, and tears well up in my eyes blurring my vision. I wish it was all a dream. Suddenly, I hear a knock on the door behind me. How well? Y yes Who is it? I rub my eyes, scrambling to compose myself as I call out. Hmm? I wait and wait for a response, but there is no reply. Huh? Did I imagine it? I could have sworn I heard somebody knocking. Still in doubt, I hear another quick knock. Who's there? I reach for the door handle and slowly open it. I stare out the door incredulously, scanning the area for signs of the visitor I had expected to see. Huh? Are you kidding me? There's nobody here. I crane my neck, searching either side of my doorway, but I find nothing to indicate that there had been anyone out here. What's going on? I thought somebody was here. There's no sign of anybody. Befuddled into silence and rooted in place, I gaze vaguely around the hall. I've been befuddled into silence. Before long, I come to my senses, and a feeling of fright begins to creep up my legs, setting my body trembling. I quickly turn and rush back into my room. I'm scared. No more, please! Wow. Ah! A scream slips out of me as something cold touches the nape of my neck. No! Somebody help! <laughs> you suck! So this is a Karasaba thing as well. Dude, not cool! <laughs> I got you good, Benny Uri! What? Oh man, that reaction was delicious! It's me, your friendly manor mate Karasaba! Jeez, though. There was obviously something shady afoot, and you just threw your door wide open. You've got to be ready for anything, you know. He waggles his index finger around as he delivers his mock lecture. I don't want to hear it from you. That cold thing was Karasava's finger? You were hiding? Yep, right behind the door. Oldest trick in the book, too, so I figured you'd spot me. Guess not, though. You're awful! How would I know that? Don't scare me at a time like this! Come on, is there any better time than now? Don't be so frowny. You've got to learn to have a good time in situations like this. He winks at me without the slightest hint of guilt. I wonder if Karasaba was at all surprised by what Usagi told us earlier. Um... Did you... <clears throat> did you have something you wanted to talk about? Sorry. Had like a crumb stuck in my throat. Where did that come from? Random crumb from the sandwich I ate a half an hour ago? Excuse you. I did indeed. It's a bit nippy out here, though. You mind if I come inside? Huh? Well, I... Hey! Don't mind if I do. I didn't even answer him yet! Rude! What's your dealio, man? Huh. So this is your room, eh? You keep the place pretty tidy. Karasava slips past me and into my room, looking back and forth at the interior. 
Please don't stare. It's embarrassing. Oh, be still my heart! I love hearing you say that. Makes it sound like there's some special connection between us. Really gets my blood pumping. Ugh, he's always messing around like this. He speaks smoothly as he continues to survey the room. He seems to tire of it quickly, though, and turns to face me, falling abruptly silent. What? I look at him, expecting to see the usual grin beneath his amber eyes. There's still the faint hint of a smile there, but something feels different about it. Squint. Say, Benny Yuri, do you ever find yourself wishing that this whole world was a dream? Well, what a quinky dink that you would ask such a question. I had just thought that. Huh? Actually, no. Not just this world. Anything and everything unpleasant. Ever wish they were all a dream? All of it would go away, and only good things would happen to us. Well, I... That's exactly what I was thinking about until he showed up. I give a start, feeling as though he has seen right into my mind. Yeah. Well, Beniuri? I... Um... I've had similar thoughts before, but what would make him ask now all of a sudden? I can't agree with him, though. Somewhere inside me, I feel alarm bells going off. It's the Andari al alarm bells. Ding, 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 ding. Look out. Look out. Press buttons. Sure, it'd be nice if there were a world with nothing but happiness in it. But if everything bad were to vanish, people would never grow. I feel like we shouldn't run away from the things we have to face. We have to be strong, or we'll never be able to live. Aha. Uh -huh. I see. Those words are all I can muster to rally my own heart ready to break at a moment's notice. That's right. I have to be more positive. I was running away from the things I have to deal with. Having put my thoughts into words, I suddenly feel like I have the courage to face this outrageous world. You go, girl. But... So, you're gonna face the situation with Yamato, too? <laughs> he turned into that weird monster, yeah. And the master guy, whoever he is, sent you to a photo right before it happened. Why were you the one who got the picture? Could what happened to him be your fault? What the hell, Karasaba? I... If so, you've got some nerve being all optimistic like that. His words are intentionally hurtful, and I can feel my nascent courage shrinking away. Seeing my face, he beams at me and moves in close. W Karasaba? Um. I feel like I've been misled somehow. <laughs> Unless Manchero comes here to save my butt. Uh, hi? <laughs> the next moment, he pushes me up against the wall. He's smiling, but his eyes hide a fierceness that freezes me in place. Well, glad we're getting a little bit of a hint of what his road's gonna be like next time. I can't wait. You're a liar, Benny Yuri. You're not like that at all, are you? You are shaking in your shoes just standing alone in the hallway. Even now, you can't wait to run away. You pretend to be Miss Positivity. You say all the right words. That kind of crap drives me crazy. K Karasapa, please stop. Not gonna run away no matter what, huh? That way, even if something awful like this happens, you can pick yourself back up. Well, aren't you strong? I stiffen up both of my arms restricted as Karasaba moves his angry face close to mine. N no Karasaba, stop! Uh, Karasaba! As if trying to torment me, he brings his lips close ever so slowly. You literally only had to wait one more route, my dude. One more. 
I can hardly deal with the sheer animosity in his gaze. And just as my eyes are about to overflow with tears... <laughs> you suck! You suck and I'm not a fan! <laughs> Get out of my room! I'm calling the police. Gotcha! I wouldn't do something like that. Huh? Oh, did you think I was for real? Man, you're a serious one, aren't you? Sorry for being mean. He lets me go and flashes another broad smile. I don't buy it. I stare at him, dumbstruck, dumbstruck at what has just happened. He takes a finger and wipes the single tear from my face. This is what you call gaslighting, sir. Why are you doing this? Somehow I manage to squeeze the words out, but my voice cracks pitifully. Perhaps he's satisfied with my reaction because his smile grows even deeper. I don't know. Just felt like bullying the goody-goody. You know, like how guys will tease the girl they like. That sort of thing. I was planning on eating you all up, but I'll let you go for now. Ah! Mmm, delicious. He licks the tear on his finger. Gross, get out of here. His taunting gaze makes my cheeks burn. Don't do weird stuff like that to me anymore. If you're done talking, then get out. Aw, but we haven't talked at all, have we? I'm just getting started. He loudly and deliberately clears his throat and then opens his mouth to speak. Oh, good God. Manchero, save me. <clears throat> so, I think I know everybody here out in the real world. Okay. You what? My memories haven't entirely returned, but I just have this familiar feeling. Okay, is that why you decided to come in here and be all Yandere-like? Yeah, that's it. My gut says so. We knew each other back in the real world? It's true that I feel really comfortable with everyone. It's not that big a leap to think that we've been friends for a long time. That said, I do have one caveat. There is an oddball among us. <laughs> an imposter, you might say. An oddball? Yeah, somebody's throwing off the balance, or like, creating this weird out-of-place feeling. Some kind of dissonance, you know? I guess this is why we needed to pick this option, because... The one- the oddball is, uh, Hikage throwing out the whole Manshiro thing. What on earth is he talking about? Is it just that there happens to be an outsider mixed in among us? Or maybe... A person with some kind of ulterior motive? I really don't know. I can't even remember my own family yet. Don't take it too seriously. I only told you because you seemed like the least likely threat. So... Kurosawa opens the door and turns, smiling sweetly. Like I said before, you need to be ready for anything. The next person behind your door could be a lot more dangerous than me. Mm, I don't know if that's true. If you refuse to see what's right in front of you, you're the one who's going to regret it. Kurosawa. With that remark, he disappears out the door. I thought we were all friends. And now, just like that, the seeds of doubt have been sown among us. So much among us, my goodness. I don't know whether that seed will ever sprout, but it's more than enough to fan the flames of anxiety. Thanks, Karasaba. You dick. <laughs> Ugh. Terrible. Okay. Um, so... I think what I'll do is I'll wait till we run into Monshiro and then do the, uh... Alright, well, never mind, I got another gun game to play. <laughs> Can't believe Monshiro took over my Monshiro route. Couldn't wait one more time. Oh, by the way, um, Kagiha, I'm gonna suck at this. 
Also, did the butterflies turn green just for you? Because that's pretty dope, if that's true. Um, but yeah, don't expect much from me. But also be proud of me at the end, if you could. I would appreciate that. Uh, yeah, Karaspa just took over my Manchiro route. Because he couldn't be bothered to wait, like, one more turn. Which is actually typical for his personality and character. So I don't know why I'm surprised. I'm not surprised. I'm disappointed. But he's basically playing out as the personality I thought he would end up being, so... There's that. But he did give us the thing of, like, he has remembered some of what's going on. More than most. So it looks like him and Yamato actually remembered quite a bit. Which makes sense, because Kagiha and Hakage are actually both liars at this stage. And, I mean, Hakage knows everything that's going on, except for his actual past and why he started this whole thing, ironically enough. But, um... Kagiha... I think he, he probably also had his memories. Don't know how much, but... Aw, oh, you gave me an S, so I'll forgive you for it, I guess. But yeah, man, all right. But he's like, there's somebody here that shouldn't be, which is interesting. Uh, actually, I know Manchero shows up here shortly. Ah, there it is. But luckily we have something great. Which is, we can jump to scenes. I love this. This feature is so nice. So just as I go to follow behind Kagiha... Huh? Out of the corner of my eye, I catch a flicker of something white. Reflexively, I snap my head up to look at the second floor. Whatever it was seems to have vanished. A silhouette? Was that Asagi? I follow after Kagiha, thoughts of that white shape lingering in my mind. Okay, I think we'll just go from here, actually. Later in the evening, I find myself gazing at the kaleidoscope lost in my thoughts. I can't stop thinking about Yamato. Where is he, and what could he be doing right now? I wonder if Usagi knows where he is. The scene replays itself in my mind. Yamato screaming wildly as his body twists and contorts into that horrible monster. His grotesque form enveloped in a black haze is utterly indescribable. I wonder what I'd do if I ever got to see him again. I'm not even sure he can still communicate. I let out a heaving sigh. <sighs> as I lift my head, I notice a clump of white butterflies gathering in front of the door. Huh? What are they doing? They're usually flying around the room. Do they want to go outside? I get up from my chair and walk towards the door. Thinking that they want to get out, I open the door. Oh, and out they go. Their wings fluttering, the butterflies float straight down the hallway. I've never seen this happen before. I wonder if there's something outside. The white butterflies try to guide us, and the monsters won't go near them, so maybe... It should be okay if I follow them just a little. As though drawn along by something unseen, I follow the phosphorescent glow of the butterflies. Where the heck are they headed? I probably shouldn't follow them too far. Fluttering left, right, up, down, back, and forth, the butterflies' motion seems unstable, but nonetheless, they advance onward without hesitation. Before I know it, we've arrived at the entrance hall. The butterflies start to float upward towards the high ceiling. They're going up? I can't follow them there. They continue to gain altitude as they bob along the slope of the central stairway. I let out a sudden gasp when I see where they finally come to a stop. <gasps> You're... Hello again. The white butterflies completely engulf the form of a man standing at the landing of the stairs. The cloak wrapped around his slender frame flutters, despite there being no trace of wind. His unkempt silvery hair shines brightly, like the milky way streaming through the night sky. You're the person we saw that first day. 
His appearance is so unorthodox I can't tear my eyes away. But thanks to the fox mask, I can't see his face at all. Come. What? He awaits. His voice is muffled behind the mask. With an upward movement of his chin, he gestures for me to go upstairs. He wants me to follow him? Who are you? Do you remember saving us? Come. Yamato. Yamato? Without a response to any of my questions, I head up the stairs. What should I do? I don't even know where we're headed. I really shouldn't be following him. If Hakage found out, he'd be yelling about me having no sense of caution again. Still... Yamato could be up there. Wait! I'm coming! I call out to him, making up my mind and stepping onto the stairway. Where are you taking me? You said he awaits, right? Were you talking about Yamato? He continues to walk in silence. Onward he walks without responding to any of my questions. Past one corner and another, we wind our way through the halls. He remains fixed on our destination, weaving through the corridors with total familiarity. This path is so complicated. I'm not sure I'll be able to remember it. Was it left twice, then right? And now another left, right? Uh, am I going to be able to find my way back? Just as I'm beginning to feel uneasy, the man stops. He throws a glance back at me before knocking on the wall a few times. And... Whoa! What I had taken to be nothing more than a plain wall suddenly slides open, revealing a set small stone steps. A secret doorway? I had no idea. He is here. Huh? He is here. Alone. He's telling me to go. Okay, but... Just me? You're not coming? I... He hesitates for a moment before continuing. I... cannot. So I'll wait here. You'll wait? I will guide you back. Worry not. You... remember his true form. He puts his head to the wall and falls silent, evidently having decided to say nothing further. Well? Now what? Considering what he said, I'm not sure he'll just let me go back. And what was all that about his true form? I make up my mind to go. I step through the secret doorway and look up the stairs. They stretch on for a long way, and the area beyond is awash in pale light, as if sunlight is pouring down from above. It's too bright to be an attic, and it feels totally different from the other rooms in the manor. I wonder what lies ahead. Well, unfortunately, we're going to skip this because we just did this with Yamato. So we'll do this until we go and leave. And then we'll talk to our boy again. And as usual, I pressed the wrong button. Let's see. Okay. We'll go there. Bye, Yamato. Take care of yourself. Are you finished? When I reach the bottom, the man is waiting there, as promised. Yes, for today. But I'd like to come back soon. Understood. I will guide you when the time comes. The man nods and starts walking. As I follow behind, I realize that I feel a strange sense of, of affinity for him. I know nothing about him, but I don't feel afraid at all. Actually, I feel like I can let my guard down when he's around. Maybe it's because he took me to Yamato, but I just can't bring myself to see him as someone bad. Who are you? How did you know where Yamato was? So many questions burn in my mind, but I doubt I'll get answers even if I were to ask. So... Thank you. For bringing me to Yamato. Hmm. I offer him my gratitude. As usual, he doesn't reply. 
Still, I sense the slightest softening in his demeanor. We continue to walk without exchanging any further words. Before long, we are approaching the front of the hideout. The way there felt so far, but it didn't seem so bad coming back. Not that I remember the route that well. I will see you tomorrow. What? You will? Oh, that's right. I told him I wanted to go again soon. I guess he'll come to pick me up. Tomorrow. Yes, thank you. See you tomorrow. I thank him once again, and at that he bows slightly and walks off into the gloom. Oh shoot! I forgot to ask the most important thing. I should have asked what his name is. What a mysterious person. I stare off in the direction he disappeared and wonder... This is probably important, both to Manshiro and Kazuya. What's his connection to Yamato? There must be a reason why he specifically brought the two of us together. As I make my way back to my room, I find myself unable to shake the feeling that somehow, in some way, the two of them are connected. <laughs> 